Congress, and joining me now is Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. She spent today on Capitol Hill with John Lewis's family discussing voting rights and sending a petition to the White House to end the filibuster. Congresswoman, do you actually believe that the Senate will get some kind of voting legislation across the finish line when they get back from recess? We have the support of the American people, if you look at the polls on the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, uh, on all the voting rights legislation. Uh, but the filibuster may stand in the way. We are coming back, and that's very unusual during August recess. And the reason, I think, is because we have these majorities of the people on our side, so it's worth coming back to try to pass this legislation. I mean, the filibuster, coming back is significant, but, but again, the filibuster is the thing that we always go back to because that's the thing in the way of really anything. Anything you need Republican votes for can't happen because of the filibuster. So with that in mind, do you think President Biden is being strong enough or, do you, or you, are you optimistic that he will do what, it needs to be, what needs to be done in terms of the filibuster to enact things like voting rights and other civil rights legislation? Well, we do need to hear more from the president on the filibuster, but let's face it, the filibuster is in our court. Look at how the Democrats got control of the House and the Senate, especially the Senate. The Republicans had control of the Senate before this year, but they allowed the filibuster to keep anything from happening. It is for that reason, largely, that Democrats won the Senate, and they realized that. Uh, so they even held up organizing uh, in order to try to get rid of the filibuster. Now, they haven't done it yet, but they understand that they will not hold this Senate either unless they can do something about the filibuster and start passing legislation for the American people. I mean, it's such a good point. You know, if you, if you get elected, you get the majority, and then you go, well, we can't, we still can't do anything. That it's, it's not a good message to go back to voters with. So uh, you would you assume example. people would try to make, make something happen. Let me give you an example that shows that this is doable. The filibuster, we used to do filibusters for legislation and for judgeships. We got rid of the filibuster for all of those except legislation. Look, if we can get rid of the filibuster for nominations to the courts and for uh, to the legislature, we can get rid of the filibuster if we do what the Senate Democrats are trying to do now, and that is giving the filibuster top level support. So I want to turn to the census data because that is something I'm a little obsessed with. I wrote an entire book about how the changing demographics in the country are going to change uh, what our politics look like, who we elect, and what they look like. Um, the book is called The End of White Politics. Um, what do you think it means for the future of elections in the country that voters are going to be more of color and, and less white than they've ever been? And that's the point, because if you looked at who controls the legislature, you'd have to give up on the Democrats, because the Republicans control about 20 state legislatures. We control six. Uh, but look at where the population is, and that's how we win or have to try to win in the census numbers, because the population growth has been in the cities and, and in the suburbs among minorities. Uh, and that's what gives us some leverage as the census numbers begin to roll out. In terms of D.C. statehood, similarly, um, this is an issue that you've been you've been on the forefront of this issue uh, for decades. You're the third person to be in your particular position. But, you know, non-voting member, when there are 700,000 black people <laughs> that live in, in the district without that congressional representation or representation in the Senate with that voting power. Um, what about D.C. statehood? We've, we've seen more attention on that issue than ever before. Are you optimistic 
movement can happen on that too. Well, look, there's 700,000 in there, about half black and half white. Uh, and I'm very optimistic about D.C. statehood. We've been able to get it passed in the House twice. We've had a Senate hearing. Uh, so the next step for the Senate, with only the filibuster standing in the way, is to pass it in the Senate. Now, we do have uh, three or four senators who are not fully committed. But if we get there, uh, if we get over this filibuster, I believe we will get uh, the, those senators because the Senate is controlled by Democrats. Thank you for that correction. 700,000 total, half black, half white, but certainly would improve representation in terms of black people. And it would give uh, two senators to the District of Columbia. Eleanor Holmes Norton, Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here tonight. And please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.